Hi, I'm Isla. I'm a part of the Ellisburg and Bristol team. And when I'm not working, I'm helping run the University of Bristol Snow Sports Society. I'm here to talk to Dom from Protect Our Winters, a charity that we at Ellis Brigham have been working closely with for a while now. I'm very keen to understand from Dom what I can do to protect our sport and the environment. Let's go chat to Dom. Hi Dom, would you like to introduce yourself and say a little about POW and your visions and missions? Hi there, I'm Dom. I work for Protect Our Winters UK. So Protect Our Winters or POW is a climate charity. We help passionate outdoor people take effective action on climate change. And it was first founded in the United States by legendary snowboarder Jeremy Jones. Um, it's now lots of chapters worldwide following in the footsteps of that first chapter doing really well um, and helping progress climate action. So um, we do things like run campaigns. We've also uh, delivering courses like carbon literacy training, which were delivered to the Ellis Brigham staff. So, does a typical day involve talking to Jeremy Jones? Yeah, not the typical day, but uh, he's, de he's definitely really involved still um, in the States in particular. And we have our own athletes and ambassadors in the United Kingdom. So, yeah, I work with them to train them. Um, and it's uh, working with those athletes is a key part of how we can uh, achieve our mission. Being a skier, I'm passionate about the environment that I love. Um, but are the two at odds because I'm not ready to hang up my boots, not just yet? Yeah, so this is what Protect Our Winters is all about, is people who are passionate about snow sports or climbing or whatever it is that gets you in the outdoors. Um, and they don't have to be at odds, right? We have the opportunity to make this industry sustainable and we also have the opportunity to use our voice to make the wider world a better mm -hmm. place. Um, so that's what we have to do now and I'm a passionate snowboarder and uh, also a surfer and yeah, being out in the outdoors is what's made me want to protect it. I um, have been skiing since I was in school but then it was more recently uh, I did two ski seasons just after I finished university and there I was seeing like weirdly late seasons. I was lucky because I was in a high altitude resort but like the Dolomites were just little strips of snow. Um, there was a ski uh, snow gun, that was pretty much it. So uh, that was what was really opening my eyes to the issues in the mountains. And that's what makes me want to protect it. So that harnessing that is what it's all about. The snow sports industry um, and mountain sports aren't perfect, but mm -hmm. very, little, like, very little is um, in the way the world is set up. We have the opportunity to change that. So is it too late for our winters? Um, we've seen that the glaciers are melting and in the past few weeks felt the temperature rise. Is it too late? It all feels a little out of our hands. Uh, yeah, so definitely we're already feeling the effects of climate change and global heating. Certainly in the last few months as we're filming this has been crazy heat waves um, across Europe. But yeah, this is also being felt in the mountains. Um, and the IPCC, uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is sort of the leading scientific body on climate change, says that it's definitely already impacting the operation of the lower elevation ski resorts. Ski seasons are already about a month short than they were 50 years ago in the Alps. Every degree the uh, temperature increases, it gives you sort of a best part of 150 meters snow line increase. Um, so we've already seen a couple of degrees average in the Alps. So it's already like, you know, shifting hundreds of meters where the snow line is and these sorts of impacts, impacts local communities and economies massively. Um, and that's why uh, communities are keen to have like snow cannons to provide backup, but you know, the, the snow's not as good, but also it adds environmental impact because uh, it's a lot of water use, a lot of energy use. Um, and it's actually cited as a bad adaptation by some of the top scientific bodies because if the temperature gets too high, you won't be able to snow cannon, it just won't work anymore. And yeah, I mean, it leads to some scary impacts. It's like, this is safety in terms of avalanches and particularly uh, some of the summer rock climbing, those routes you just can't do anymore um, because of these impacts. So um, yeah, it's really, it's really causing issues in the mountains, but the more we do now, the less, uh, the less that that will be impacted in the future. And uh, that's already recognized by the top level scientific bodies that um, there is a chance still to protect uh, what we do. As skiers, snowboarders and uh, outdoor enthusiasts, what can we do to help? So there are changes that you can make within uh, the sports you mentioned and the inter those interests. So travel is one of the biggest causes of greenhouse gases. If you look at a mountain trip, it's probably at least two thirds or more um, travel if you, if you fly. So if you can get to the mountains, not by flying or by flying less far. So even just uh, the Alps rather than Canada, 
you know, that's making a massive difference to the impact of your trip in terms of climate emissions. There's also the choice of resort and some resorts have moved to um, renewable electricity or have certifications uh, like Flock en Vert in France, um, which is a sustainability certification. Um, so you can start to choose these places and, and shop well when you're buying equipment um, and make it last. But uh, yeah, there's also the case of like, what can you do outside your trip in your everyday life or, or influencing the biggest systemic change. So um, we also need to make sure that politicians are taking responsibility for this issue. So just supporting campaigns from charities is really powerful. And that's what's going to get us really to net zero at the end of the day, which is where we need to be. And how do you find these resorts that have the better, um, more eco-friendly side? Yeah, if you look on um, the resort pages, they'll often have a sustainability page that tells you all about it. Um, you can look in France for the Flock en Vert uh, green snowflake uh, logo. But yeah, particularly on the travel side of things, just some resorts are just easier to get to by uh, train, for example. So um, if you go to Les Arc, you get a free, um, a free transfer from, from the train station. So the overall cost is, is not bad compared to flying at all. What is the bigger solution to global warming? Well, fundamentally, it's fossil fuels causing the problem and we need to leave those in the ground. Like we can add all the renewables we want, but if we don't stop using uh, coal, oil, gas, then it's not going to solve the problem. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we've got to make sure this happens and commit to an end date on fossil fuels. How can people take action via POW? Yeah, so you can learn a lot more about the uh, problem of climate change, how it's affecting the outdoors and uh, the wider world through our carbon literacy training and it will also teach you more importantly what we can do about it how to take that effective action that will stop climate change um, you can also support our campaigns so current campaigns include save the ski train trying to bring back that direct route from london to the alps and divest the dirt which is helping move money out of fossil fuels and there's big campaigns coming in the future so keep a lookout for that sign up to newsletter to find out more um, you can also help companies take effective climate action with the Power Pledge um, and you can also donate to Protect Our Winters to help us take more effective action ourselves. Uh, the Pledge is something we at Ellis Brigham have signed up to and have started our journey towards net zero. How many other organisations do you have signed up? Yeah, so the Power Pledge is really there to help organisations take that effective action to stop climate change, as you mentioned, by getting to net zero. And we've got uh, well over 100 organisations working on the Power Pledge, and it really brings out eight of the key steps that we, everyone uh, as a company can take on climate change. What are the eight steps of the Pledge? So companies can uh, increase their resilience to the impacts of climate change, uh, move to 100% renewable electricity, there's also stopping using fossil fuels for heating. Then there's um, using zero uh, emissions transport, so electric vehicles. Then you've got to identify what some of your top causes of greenhouse gases and really focus on cutting them, committing to cutting them in the next few years. Then you're starting to look really big picture long term. Where do we need to be is net zero. So pledge six is about reaching net zero and that needs to be before 2040. Number seven is about helping uh, the topic of green finance, talking to your financial service providers about taking money out of fossil fuels. And then the final one is influencing others. So uh, partners you work with and your customers telling them about your journey um, and influencing the wider world on positively on climate change. At Ellis Brigham, we've been working with you guys at Pi for a while now and we've been donating 1% of our ski sales. How is that money being used? Yeah, this money is hugely important to Protect Our Winters UK and it really helps support us delivering our missions. So particularly underpinning our campaigns and attending events like going to COP26 and going into other areas of the community and being able to talk about these topics and deliver information, that's really important to us. So what's next for POW? We've got big campaigns coming up, so definitely keep an eye out for those. Um, we'll also be expanding our carbon literacy training further um, and adding new athletes and ambassadors uh, to help us grow our reach. So yeah, big things to come. If you could go back 40 years, what would you change? So 40 years ago, there was already the opportunity to start taking action on this. And if we had, then we'd be having a much easier um, transition in dealing with this issue. Um, and because we've left it quite late, we now have to take quite urgent action. This is why we're talking about it as a climate crisis. Um, so yeah, just making sure we got started earlier. But to make sure that happened, um, I think it would be potentially an issue of communicating the science clearly and particularly how we talk about it and the impacts of it. There was a lot of focus early on 
about sort of the Arctic and places that are a long way away for people. So if we can talk more about the impacts on people, wildlife, and more direct and near-term impacts, I think that would be more effective. So I'd probably change that. And now fast forward 20 years, what will the world be like? So hopefully we'll see a lot more electrification, particularly heating and uh, transportation. Uh, if we're lucky by then, we might even be seeing some net zero short haul flights. Um, but key to that is mass rollout of renewables and stopping use of fossil fuels so that we can power all these newly electrified systems in a low carbon way. So where is your favourite place to snowboard and why? Uh, I think it's got to be VT in the French Alps. I love Whistler, but it's a bit far away to go on the regular. And why is that? Uh, well, I did a season there, so I just know it. <laughs> I can find the good snow. <laughs> High altitude too, so um, less likely to be uh, uh, bad snow. So Dom, thank you so much for meeting up with me. I've personally uh, learned a lot. Do you have any forward thoughts for our viewers? Protect Our Winters were really uh, dependent on people getting involved and supporting this issue and we all need to work together to beat climate change. So please do come everyone and follow us uh, on Instagram, sign up to our newsletter, you'll find out all the latest information, what's going on on this topic and particularly things you can do about it. So you'll find out about our campaigns, our opportunities to learn more. Uh, so yeah, come support us and protect our winters with us. Thank you.